Number 36. Tough guy competed in a 30-mile race, half the time running and half the time on bicycle. He averaged 15 miles per hour running and 25 miles per hour on his bicycle. How long did it take him to complete the race? This, like any kind of problem which involves physics, normally we think about train problems, like a train leaves this station, how long does it take to collide with this other train? And a lot of people are easily intimidated by any physics-related problems. <clears throat> but this one is actually fairly simple. Well, we want to keep in mind are a few formulas from physics. For example, distance equals rate times time. And really, we can, we can break this up into chunks. We'll say the first leg of the race uh, and the second leg. We can write expressions in terms of r and t. I mean, what we really want to find at the very end is uh, t, because it says how long did it take him to complete the race. We want to know uh, what is our ultimate value for time. So it does say he goes uh, half of the time. So these first and second legs are actually equal in length. Uh, as far as the rate, well, that is the miles per hour. Uh, he averaged 15 miles per hour running. So 15. The time is exactly what we want to solve for. However, what we do know is that it took him half of the time, half of the total time, the value we want to solve for, it took half of that uh, running and then half of it on bicycle. So we can actually express this as t over 2, or 1 half of t, since it's half of the race. So the t over 2. Okay, the second leg of the race, in which he's on bicycle, is also uh, rate times time, and this would be 25 miles per hour for the rate, again, multiplied by t over 2. And then we know that the first leg plus the second leg will give us the total, and that's given to us in the problem as well. He competed in a 30-mile race, so the total is 30. Uh, and then we actually get a very easy algebra equation to solve. What we have is a common denominator here, which is 2, uh, and then 15 plus 25, we can combine like terms. So 15 t's plus 25 t's will give us a total of 40 t's. And that's over 2 still is equal to 30. And it's funny how easy this simplifies. 40 divided by 2 is simply 20. So we have 20 t equals 30. And thus, we can solve for our variable t. And I want to note that, you know, units are very important in physics. Since these were given in miles per hour, we know that 1525 are given with miles, and this one is also given in miles, this will solve for time in hours. It will solve for time in terms of hours. So we divide by 20 on both sides to get our t value t is equal to 3 halves, or 1.5, and uh, 1.5 hours, I should be writing units, I should be writing units on this whole thing, but that's a little time consuming, 1.5 hours is an hour and a half, d. 41, an equilateral triangle has a side length s and an apothem a, the area of the triangle is, this was a very interesting problem. I felt like I should go over it because I actually went through this test and I timed myself and uh, I spent way too much time on this problem under some misconceptions. Working out this problem also gives me a chance to review some good geometry. An equilateral triangle has all side lengths the same, of course, the same length, and it also has all angles equal measure. Because we know that the sum of the angles is 180, we know that each of these interior angles must be 60 degrees. Now, what we're also given is the side lengths are s. So every side here is of length s. And actually, there's a really handy formula for equilateral triangles in which we can solve just using the side length s. However, this wants us to solve it in terms also of the apothem A. Okay, so apothem, every regular polygon, and an equilateral triangle is a special type of 
regular polygon. It's specifically, it's a three-sided regular polygon. We normally think of the apothem as being at the center. The problem is, this is a triangle, and triangles have tons and tons of different points which can be considered the center. And so, let's remember that the apothem is actually going to appear at the center of a circle circumscribing this equilateral triangle. In other words, all the vertices of this triangle are points which fall on this circle, the, the circumcircle. And so the center of this circle, which we can put around right here, uh, that's the circumcenter for this triangle, and that's where the apothem is drawn from. Remember, the apothem is a segment that goes from the circumcenter and is perpendicular and will, of course, bisect this segment down here. And we're given that value as A. The length of the apothem is A. So if we go back to our very basic formula for triangles, area equals one-half base times height, uh, we actually already know the base. The base is S from here to here. We actually want to express the height in terms of the apothem. Let's look at a radius. Uh, a radius, again, would go from this center over to a vertex. And the length of that radius here would be the same as the length of this radius over here as well. Now, this radius bisects this angle right here, the 60 degree angle, and so this leaves us with a measurement of 30 degrees down here. We could also come to that conclusion if we looked at this central angle right here. And remember that our central angles all add up to 360. And uh, if we divided 360 by 6, which is how many of these we would have total, we would get 60 degrees here. The point is that a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And why do we care about that? Well, because we want to know how the length of the apothem compares with the length of the radius. Because the length of the radius is what is left over right here in terms of the height of this red triangle. It's super important to know your special right triangles and specifically uh, how their side lengths relate to one another. The side opposite 30 is the smallest side. We normally call that X. The side opposite of 60 will be that same value x times the square root of 3. And the side, the hypotenuse, the side opposite of 90 is 2 times x, or twice whatever value this was. Now, what that means is the apothem is only half as long as this radius. So really, we could express the radius as the value 2a, because it's twice as long as the apothem. We have one section here we still need to label out to get the height from here to here is the same as from here to here because it's a radius. These two are equal. So this is 2a. If you add that value with this a that is already here, you get the total height of that triangle. So let's make our final substitutions here. This area is one half the base of the triangle, which is S, times the height of the triangle, which here is 2A plus A, or in other words, a total of 3A, or three times the length of the apothem. If we simplify that, we get 3SA over 2, or answer choice A.